you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Cummings, uh, for the invitation to come here and to address you and the other members of the committee. It's an honor to be here with you today. I'm here to defend the constitutional prerogatives of Congress. And I want to be clear from the outset that regardless of whatever political concerns I might have with these nominations, my overriding dominating concerns here is not partisan. Rather, it is an institutional and a constitutional concern that I am here to explain and then answer any questions that you might have regarding those concerns. President Obama's January 4, 2012 appointments are unconstitutional because they did not comply with the requirements for appointments set forth in the Constitution. Those requirements, I might add, are important because, as the Founding Fathers discussed in that fateful convention in the summer of 1787 that occurred in Philadelphia, the Founding Fathers were unwilling to grant this power on an unrestrained basis to an executive, as they argued that it would not be wise to, quote, grant so great a power to any single person as the people would think we are leaning too much towards monarchy, close quote. These appointments were unconstitutional because they neither received the advice and consent of the Senate, nor were they made during a Senate recess, the kind of recess cognizable under the Recess Appointments Clause. They are different in kind than previous recess appointments made by any President from any political party in our nation's country. No President has ever unilaterally appointed an executive officer during a recess of less than three days. Neither, to my knowledge, has a president of either party ever asserted the power to determine for himself when the Senate is or is not in session for purposes of the Recess Appointments Clause. In making these appointments, President Obama has not, to my knowledge, asserted that his January 4, 2012 appointments can be justified based on the three-day adjournment that occurred between January 3, 2012 and January 6, 2012. And this is for good reason. Surely any such assertion of the recess appointment power would be unconstitutional. The Department of Justice has repeatedly and uh, the, over the course of many decades opined that an adjournment of significant length, and particularly an adjournment of three days or less, uh, that, that, that is, a, a, any adjournment that is of, of insignificant length because it is of three days or less, does not constitute a recess for purposes relevant to this Recess Appointments Clause. And the text of the Constitution evidences that the framers did not consider an adjournment like this to be constitutionally significant. It is also significant here that Article I, Section 5 provides that neither House during the session of Congress shall, without the consent of the other, adjourn for more than three days. So if an intra-session adjournment of less than three days were to be considered constitutionally sufficient for the President to be able to exercise this recess appointment power, it is unclear what, if anything, would prevent the President from routinely bypassing the Constitution's advice and consent requirement and appointing nominees during even weekend adjournments, which routinely involve periods of 72 hours or even more in which the Senate may not be actually in, in the practice of holding committee hearings and voting and so forth. Instead, in asserting that his appointments are constitutional, President Obama has relied on a memorandum opinion produced by the Office of Legal Counsel in the Department of Justice, also known as OLC. This OLC memorandum asserts that the President may unilaterally conclude that the Senate's brief pro forma sessions, such as those that were held on January 3, 2012 and continued every Tuesday and every Friday uh, until January 23, 2012, somehow do not constitute sessions of the Senate for purposes relevant to the Recess Appointments Clause. This assertion is deeply flawed because under the procedures established by the Constitution, it is for the Senate and it is not for the President to decide when the Senate is in session. Indeed, the Constitution expressly grants the power to determine the rules of its own proceedings. To assert that the President has an unconstrained right to determine for himself when the session is or is not in session and to appoint nominees unilaterally at any time he feels the Senate is not responsive, as responsive as he would like it to be, even when the Senate is meeting, is to trample upon the Constitution's separation of powers and the system of checks and balances that animated the adoption of the advice and consent requirement. 
I look forward to answering your questions. And uh, as I answer those questions, I will continue to emphasize again and again that ours is not a government of one. These are real rights upon which the President has trampled. This is power that he's taken that doesn't belong to him. It belongs to the American people. And under our constitutional system, that power is to be exercised by the people's elected representatives in the Senate and not by the President alone. There are people throughout my state and across America who feel powerless, and that's why I've made the comments I have that this is a lawless action that we need to object to strenuously.